The Federal Reserve just cut interest rates for the second time this year. So that means mortgage rates are finally going to come down, right? Right? False. Contrary to what we all thought and what we were hoping for, mortgage rates have actually gone up since the Fed started reducing interest rates back in September. We had this little moment over the summer where mortgage rates were coming down. The average rate on a 30-year mortgage actually hit a two-year low in September of 2023 at 6.08%. But then as soon as the Fed started cutting interest rates, mortgage rates reversed. They started going up, striking down that small sliver of hope that Gen Z had of one day owning a home. And as of November 8th, the average mortgage rate hit 6.79%. So in just the past six weeks, the Fed has cut rates by 0.75%, but the average mortgage rate has gone up by 0.71%. What? Well, it's important to remember what drives both of these rates, the federal funds rate that is set by the Federal Reserve and mortgage rates, which is set by lenders. So the Fed funds rate is the rate at which banks borrow and lend excess reserves to each other overnight. This rate drives interest on short-term debt like credit cards, auto loans, student loans, business loans, even uh, rates on your high yield savings account. The Federal Reserve sets this rate as a tool to achieve its dual mandate of maximizing employment and maintaining stable prices. When the Fed raises interest rates like they did in 2022, the goal is to slow down economic activity, curb inflation, stabilize prices. And then on the flip side, when they lower interest rates, the goal is to encourage borrowing and spending and stimulate economic growth and hopefully support job creation. Those rate decisions are based on a multitude of economic indicators like the personal consumption expenditures price index, uh, the unemployment rate, GDP. And while they do need to consider the long term implications of their decisions, the Fed's actions are really driven more by current economic conditions to address immediate economic needs. The Fed is sort of like the, the J.J. Abrams of the government. They're really more focused on making each episode exciting as opposed to worrying about how it all ends. Somehow Palpatine returns. Mortgage rates, on the other hand, they're not directly tied to that Fed funds rate. Instead, they're really more closely linked to the yield on 10-year treasury bonds. So these bonds are long-term debt issued by the U.S. government for the purpose of financing the country's expenses. Now, the reason mortgage rates are tied to this instead of the federal funds rate is because mortgages, like 10-year treasuries, are long-term debt instruments. And as you know, mortgages have terms of 15 to 30 years. So mortgage lenders look at that 10-year treasury yield as a benchmark because it, it reflects long-term economic expectations of investors. It's kind of a way to gauge what investors are expecting in terms of economic growth and inflation over the long run. So when investors expect economic growth, higher prices, or larger budget deficits, they demand higher yields on those treasury bonds which in turn pushes up mortgage rates. So with that context, why are mortgage rates moving up even as the Fed is cutting rates? Because up until this point, they've generally moved in the same direction. Well, starting with the Fed, they are bringing down rates based on recent economic indicators that they're seeing. In the recent meeting, Fed Chair Jerome Powell didn't really say a whole lot. He kind of just reiterated what was said in September. Here's what he had to say. The economy is strong overall and has made significant progress toward our goals over the past two years. The labor market has cooled from its formerly overheated state and remains solid. Inflation has eased substantially from a peak of 7% to 2.1% as of September. We are committed to maintaining our economy's strength by supporting maximum employment and returning inflation to our 2% goal. The FOMC decided to take another step in reducing the degree of policy restraint by lowering our policy interest rate by a quarter percentage point. Now, the Fed's original plan was to continue cutting rates in 2025 and 2026 with a target Fed funds rate of 3.25 to 3.5 by the end of 2025, and then decrease it a little more in 2026 with the overall goal of bringing inflation down to 2%. That was the plan. Now there's this new element that they need to consider, and that is a new presidential administration. As you may have heard, we uh, we just had an election and the day following the election, we saw a big uptick in the stock market. The S&P 500 was up two and a half percent on Wednesday after the election. And then by the end of the week, the S&P 500 hit a new all time high. We also saw an uptick, a slight uptick in 10 year treasury yields and mortgage rates. So what does this tell us? Well, this suggests that investors are anticipating a couple things. Uh, economic growth, but potentially also inflation and budget deficits. So Wall Street Journal put out this article titled Wall Street Salivates Over New Trump Boom. And I'm going to read through a little bit here because I think it is uh, it is helpful. Wall Street has rarely been more excited by an election. U.S. stocks capitalization rose by $1.62 trillion on Wednesday, their fifth best one day showing ever following Donald Trump's decisive election victory. The surge highlights the opportunity that investors bankers and others in finance are hoping to embrace over four years of tax cuts, 
deregulation, and economic expansion. There is no guarantee that Wall Street's dreams will be fulfilled, of course. The expected Trump policies bring twin threats of higher inflation and larger budget deficits, economists have warned, potentially discouraging the Federal Reserve from cutting interest rates as aggressively as some had hoped. Now, I'm not here to critique those claims. I'm just sharing what investors' expectations are, which influence treasury yields and therefore mortgage rates. So bringing it back to mortgage rates, these rates are influenced by a whole host of economic factors, which are shaped by policy. With the new presidential administration and likely majority in Congress, there are probably going to be some significant changes in the coming years. And I believe the recent fluctuations in mortgage rates stem from a combination of uncertainty about the incoming administration and expectations regarding the economic impact of its policies. At the moment, it appears that investors are expecting a few different things to happen. Number one, economic growth due to lower taxes and fewer regulations. In times of economic growth, investors may expect inflation to rise. When investors foresee inflation, they demand higher returns on bonds to protect their investments, which pushes up treasury yields and in turn, mortgage rates. Number two, tariffs. Now, I'm not here to critique tariffs. They're complicated and I don't want to get into it. But there is the expectation that tariffs could lead to higher prices, driving up treasury yields and therefore mortgage rates. And then finally, number three, budget deficits. When the government runs larger budget deficit, it needs to borrow more to finance its spending, usually by issuing more treasury bonds. That increased supply of bonds can then put an upward pressure on yields in order to attract investors. Since mortgage rates are closely tied to 10-year treasury yields, Higher yields can lead to higher mortgage rates. No, God, please, no. So those three main factors, or I guess really four factors, I believe are contributing to the recent uptick in mortgage rates. Economic uncertainty, potential for economic growth, the impact of tariffs, and budget deficits. So we're in this unique situation where short-term interest rates are coming down due to recent economic indicators, but then in contrast, you have long-term economic expectations that are pushing mortgage rates a little bit higher. And this does happen on occasion. It happened back in 2001 following the dot-com crash, and then in 2008 following the housing crash, where the Fed was lowering rates to try to stimulate the economy, but there was also economic uncertainty driving treasury yields and mortgage rates higher. Now, my expectation and that of other industry experts that I've read is that mortgage rates will level off in the near term and start to come down in 2025. It's just that this may not align perfectly with the Fed's plan of reducing short-term interest rates. So here's some forecasts from industry voices. As you can see, they expect a decrease from 2024 to 2025 and then a little bit beyond that. Now, a big caveat here, these were forecasts made before the recent election and we don't have updated predictions yet. And it's important to note that new policies and, and new data could shift these expectations at any point. Nobody can predict the future. So as we learn more about which policies are likely to be implemented, I think we're going to gain a clearer picture of the long-term economic impact and then mortgage rates will adjust accordingly. I wish I had a crystal ball for more precise predictions, but I hope that this explanation does shed some light on why we're seeing a contrast between short-term rates and long-term rate movements. Thanks for watching. If you found this informative, don't forget to like, subscribe. See you next time.